for people out there that don't know who Ted Demi is, Ted Demi is probably the most important person to me in my entire career because Ted Demi gave me my start on your own TV rights. What a lot of people don't know is Ted and I know each other since high school. Ted was the coolest white boy I ever met. How I met Ted was my best friend Kurt um, and Ted's family were both Episcopalian. So Ted, Kurt's mom was very big in the Episcopalian community as a part of the uh, Episcopalian diocese of Long Island and so was Ted's father. So every time that they would have these these religious retreats or whatever have you, they would always tell Kurt, bring me along just to calm Kurt down. And then Ted was out there and we were running to Ted and he knew so much about hip hop, like I, I couldn't believe it. It was up my alleyway, it was up his alleyway. So when um, Ted and Peter Doherty, God rest both their souls, decided to bring Young TV Raps to America, that's how Ted and I connected again from college and everything else. And the rest was just history, man. He put me on and it was over. Yom TV Raps, it was a show called Yo that was um, being hosted by Sophie Bromley in Europe. Um, Peter Doherty was in Europe for a long time and then he came to America to, do, to New York, to MTV, and they decided that they wanted to do a rap show. And uh, Ted was always pushing for a rap show on MTV because he's a big hip hop head. And uh, they just took Yo and they put the MTV on it and started Yo MTV with the rap and Yo MTV raps came and Fab Five Freddy was doing it first. In 88, Fab premiered and then Dre and I came along in 1989. And it was Ted actually who auditioned us separately. We didn't know each other. We, I've heard of Dre. I knew what original concept was. Um, but I was a public enemy nut and original concept was cool, but I wasn't like old Dr. Dre crazy and never met him before. And I knew who, um, you know, who Dre was through that. And I used to, every now and then I lived in Queens and they had a WBAU in Long Island. So if you, you had to kind of turn your antenna the right way to get it from where I lived at, cause they didn't have a strong signal. So every now and then I would catch them on the radio out there. So I really didn't know Dre like that. So when, we separately auditioned. Peter knew Dre from being the Beastie Boys DJ and Ted knew me. And when we auditioned, it was Ted who said, skinny, fat, Abbott Costello, let's put this together, do an audition tape together because I need a different aesthetic than Freddie being always on the road. You guys are gonna be a studio show. So let me put this thing together and see how it works out. And that's what he, that's what he did. A uh, memorable Ted, Ed moment has absolutely nothing to do with you on TV Raps. A memorable Ted Ed moment comes from Cortland State where Ted went to college. And every time they had their Cortland State picnic, we would go up to Cortland State, a bunch of black dudes to see Ted. And Ted was on the radio up there and he would be on the radio and he would count it down from 30 days down to the day that we arrived. He was playing hip hop on the radio and he would go, now it's 29 days to the brothers. And everybody on the campus was like, what are the brothers, what the? Oh, the brothers, why does he? And he would count it down all the way into this place that he worked at from school, working his way and being in college called Tootie Saloon. So here we come in the MPV, full of about 10 black dudes in the MPV, pulling up in front of this all white saloon he used to work at called Tootie's. And we get to the door and there's one of his football player buddies there about six, five, 325 pounds named Terry standing at the door. And Ted said, just ask me when you get to the door. And we get to the door and we're so intimidated by this gigantic muscular white dude at the door. And we asked for Ted Demi. And he said, oh, you want Ted? And he looks, he said, y'all must be the brothers. Come on in. So we come in, man, we meet Ted's, all the Ted's crew and Ted's pouring shots of liquor in our mouth. We just, we just had a good time, man. We just, we just had it. We had a great time. We go back, we drunk as hell. We get back to his house where he shared with his college roommates. And we sitting there. I remember four o'clock in the morning, Ted goes into the kitchen. And he comes back and he goes, Ed, have a beer. I go, Ted, I'm drunk, man. I can't have no more beer, man. Ed, have a beer. You're pissing me off. So I don't want no more beer, Ted. He just cracked one and throw it. And I just grab it. Wow. Start drinking. I put it down, Ed, have another beer. Ted, I don't want another beer. I'm about to throw up all over the place. He cracked another and throw it to me. I grab it out the air. We just keep chugging. And we wake up the next day after probably an hour of sleep. And Ted goes, all right, Andy up for breakfast, gentlemen. Everybody in the house, Andy up for breakfast. We all gave money, $10, $15, $20. We think of Ted's going out to get breakfast. Ted comes back with three cases of beer. We start drinking again. We never ate breakfast. We just drank, 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 drank drink and everybody from 
Hainsey to Red Witch to, to all of his boys and anybody that was ever there remembers the Tootsie Fight song that we made up just for being up in Cortland all them years with, with Ted. I'll never forget that dude as long as I last.